Okay, now if you will uh, turn back in your Bible from where we left off on last Sunday, back in Galatians, uh, chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's begin with uh, verse 15. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, and then verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Again, such there is no law. Um, <clears throat> last time we were talking about the fruit of the spirit and what great need there is for us to walk um, in such a way that we can bear fruit. Uh, sometimes we are told in English class today that we're not to mix our metaphors. But, you know, that's, if you're going to be biblical, you have to mix your metaphors because uh, oftentimes you'll have the uh, same metaphor used one way and then again in another metaphor in the next verse. And so it is here. He talks about the way to walk and then a way to bear fruit. I think the idea very likely here is if we're going to um, have the fruit of the spirit, then we have to walk in a certain way. Let me ask you a question to start with. Um, what, what, are, what are the requirements for walking? Now, now I'm talking about in a physical way. What is necessary in order for you to be able to walk? Give me some points here. Growing the Holy Spirit. No, I'm talking about physical now. It's physical. You've got to be alive. All right, good. That was my no, first one. You, you got to be alive. You're not going to walk if you're dead. <laughs> and the same thing is true spiritual. You're not going to be able to walk uh, in the Spirit. You're certainly not going to manifest the fruit of the Spirit if you're dead spiritually. Uh, and all of us understand uh, what it means to be born, uh, and because we are dead in our trespasses and sins. So if we're going to, if we're going to manifest any kind of fruit, then we have to be alive. Uh, a, a dead tree doesn't bring forth, forth fruit. Matter of fact, the other day I have I have, have two apple trees, and I'm not sure what's going on, but they been dying for the last couple of years and there's a lot of limbs that are dying so uh, a few days ago I took a saw and cut off some of the big limbs didn't get them all but uh, it was just not bearing any fruit so why why would they cover the ground uh, so spiritually we need life if we're going to manifest the fruit of the spirit uh, okay give me another one <clears throat> what else is necessary for you to walk Physical strength. All right, very good. That was my second one. You're, you guys right on target. Uh, you got to have strength. Uh, you may have uh, you may have desire to walk, but if you don't have the physical strength, uh, you, you know, if you're laid up in the hospital for a lengthy period of time, you lose your strength and you can't walk. Uh, I know a lot of people have experienced that, uh, and Health is a very important thing. If you're going to, uh, to walk, you've got to have good health. You've got to have strength. Uh, and if we're going to uh, walk with the Lord uh, and bear fruit, then we're going to have to have health. Uh, and health comes uh, by the Word of God, as we saw last time. It's the seed uh, that is mentioned here in verse 7 of chapter 6. God is not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Then verse 8, he that soweth to the Spirit, uh, a person has to sow uh, the seed of the Word of God in order to be healthy. It's kind of like you fertilize a tree uh, in order to get better fruit. Uh, we need to have our souls constantly fed uh, and nourished up by the Word of God. All right, another one. What is another 
necessary necessary thing for walking. Balance. Balance. All right. Uh, that would uh, be, of course, uh, what health, good health, would produce uh, the ability to balance. But if you uh, get off balance, you, you can hurt yourself pretty quickly. And I've you probably uh, had that happen to you. Uh, as you get a little bit older, you stand up too quick and you get a little dizzy and you can tip over. Um, but uh, yeah, balance. Uh, balance in our life is an important thing. Uh, you know, we need, we need to be faithful in the house of God. We need to be faithful in the word of God. We need to be faithful in our prayer life. And all those things need to be balanced out properly. All right, what else? And have a desire to get off the couch. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, that, that was another one I was hoping somebody would say. Uh, desire. You have to have a will uh, to walk. I mean, you can have the best health. You can have uh, good strength. You can be alive. But if there's no desire to get up and walk, then you probably won't. A lot of people are couch potatoes, huh? You know, they just lay around and uh, there's no real desire to, to do anything. Uh, and that's very, very common among uh, weak believers, right? We can become very lethargic uh, and have little desire to do anything. Uh, but desire the word of the Lord that we may grow thereby. All right, what else? <clears throat> good, you got some good. I have to have a good foundation to walk. Exactly. Good. I, I, I kind of thought somebody would not think of that one, but that's good. Uh, you got to have some stable ground. I don't know if you've ever been in, a, in an earthquake. I mean, have any of you been in an earthquake where you, like, I mean, it's a very, uh, it's a very uh, get disoriented really quick. And it's a very frightening thing when your foot is not stable. Because that which is under you is moving about, uh, and I, I watch people uh, walk in places that I would never walk, uh, that I would consider very dangerous, but uh, slippery surface. Surface. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever walked through the woods and come to a stream and go to step across in the shallow water and you hit that little moss that's growing on there. It's slick and your feet go out really quick. Uh, look at verse 24 in that regard. He says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Verse 26, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Those are things that can cause you to slip up really quick. Uh, it's necessary for us to be very, very careful about walking in such a way that our affections and our lusts are fulfilled. That's a very slippery slope. Uh, and vain glory, uh, you know, seeking to do things for your own uh, benefit, for your own exaltation, uh, provoking one another, causing someone else to, uh, you know, dare someone to hit you in the snout, but other ways to provoke other people, envying one another. These are all things that can cause us to uh, slip up uh, and not be able to walk in such a way. Now, when we uh, walk in the spirit, as it says in verse 16, you shall not, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You're not going to do all of these things that are mentioned here uh, in verse 17. Lust, uh, the the uh, for the flesh lusteth after the spirit and the spirit against the flesh we're in a war they're contrary one to the other uh, and so we need to be strong in our walk in our walk with the Lord uh, now let's go back uh, to uh, verse number twenty two again and we saw that this is a trilogy uh, there are nine things that the fruit of the spirit bears 
uh, and we saw the first three last time was love, joy, and peace. Now, how do you go about obtaining these three qualities? Love, joy, and peace. Now, notice what it doesn't say. The fruit of the Christian is love. It's not. No matter how good a Christian you may be, you cannot bear this kind of fruit. It's not your fruit. It's the Holy Spirit's fruit. And it's the Holy Spirit that's within us that makes these things happen. Sometimes you hear people say, well, I don't love so-and-so anymore. What they're actually saying is that they're not being led by the Spirit. They're not walking with the Lord. Because when you, you love somebody, it is produced by the Spirit. Uh, and the only way that you're going to achieve a great love is to walk with the Lord, to, to have the proper walk. Uh, an unsaved person, like the first thing we said, the, the first nece necessary thing to walk is to be alive. And a person who's not saved, who doesn't know the Lord, uh, they may manifest some kind of physical feeling of love but true love a godly kind of love uh is produced by the holy spirit that lives within the believer uh so the first requirement uh for love is to have life and to walk with the lord do you have joy do you have peace these are things that are produced uh as a result of walking with the spirit now notice the the next part of this trilogy the uh, the next three long suffering gentleness and goodness now the first three have to do with what's within our own heart love joy and peace the next three have to do with our relationship toward others am i long suffering toward others uh we have a short fuse uh, you might be kind for a while. You might uh, be patient with a person for a while, but it takes sometimes more than what man can must to be long-suffering and patient with other people. Uh, you know, some people can really push your buttons, can't they? Uh, but the Holy Spirit enables you to be tolerant. Uh, to be long suffering, you know. How how long does God remain patient and long suffering toward us? Uh, I mean, there are times I'm sure when the Lord would be justified in just not causing us to die and go to heaven, or to chasten us in some way. But God is long suffering; He's patient, and we should. Uh, have that manifestation in our heart. It's not something that you can conjure up. Now, notice he goes on to say gentleness. <laughs> uh, now, all these kind of tie together somewhat, but you know, just being kind and gentle with other people, uh, not one who is uh, has a short fuse, but one who is gentle, goodness, uh, seeking to always do that which is good. Those are fruits of the, though that is the fruit. I started to say fruits. It's not fruits. It's fruit. You notice the word here, fruit, is in the singular. These are not things you can kind of pick and choose, or you can have one and can't have the other. No, these, if you have the Holy Spirit working in you, all of these things will be manifested. Uh, now, notice the next three. He says, faith. Now, that word, as I mentioned earlier, actually means faithfulness. Uh, if you have a, another translation, ESV, I think, puts it faithfulness. Uh, faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. Now, these are qualities that show our relationship to God. Uh, if we are being led of the Spirit, we're walking with the Spirit, we're going to seek to be faithful. Uh, you're not going to be content by you know, 
being unfaithful. You're going to want to do the right thing. Um, and then he says, uh, meekness. <clears throat> uh, Moses was considered to be a, a man of great meekness. Uh, Christ himself was one of great meekness. Uh, and we sometimes we find meekness as power that's under control. Uh, and in our relationship to God, we should seek we will seek to be meek and lowly, temperance, uh, self-control. Uh, <clears throat> these are things that the Holy Spirit enables us to, to do. So I think you would agree that it is very important for all of us to be able to walk in such a way that we can have these fruit, this fruit manifested in our life. If we, verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, if we're alive in the Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is, is living within us, if we live in the Spirit, let us also, now this is something that you have an option. You can walk with, it, with the Lord, you can walk in the Spirit, or you can choose not to. Um, but again, in chapter 6, in verse 8, he that soweth to the Spirit, in other words, he is seeking to walk with the Lord. He's in the word of God. He's not seeking his own. He's crucified himself, um, as it says back in the verse we read earlier. Um, he is in the spirit. And when he's in the spirit, he shall, what, reap life everlasting. That life everlasting doesn't begin when you die. It begins when you walk with the Lord, when you are born into his family and the Holy Spirit lives within you. And you then begin your journey of walking with the Lord and growing in the Lord. Uh, and God will bless in such a way that these things will be manifested in our life. Father, we thank you for your word.